We've learned quite a bit so far, so let's go over everything and make sure we understand it all. So I have this program right here, which sort of samples everything that we've learned. And this is what it looks like. It's a cube spinning in 3D because we love spinning things so much. We keep on using them. And let's take a look at the source code to see how everything works. Uh, I'm just going to run through all of this and review it. So here are our include files for OpenGL, and here's an include file for the image loading functionality that I wrote. Then we have this constant right here, which is the size of the cube. We have the angle, the current angle of the cube, and the ID of the texture that we're going to use on the cube. Then this is the function that handles when the user presses a key. We have down here the load texture function, which is called to load the texture into OpenGL. And this is the same as in the texture uh, lesson. Then we have our init rendering function, which initializes the rendering parameters. We have enable GL depth tests, which we always have in our programs. Then we enable lighting and enable light source number zero. Then we enable GL normalize, which we'll always do when we're using lighting. And we have GL enabled GL color materials, so we can add some color to some of our faces. And then we have right here, we load an image from, uh, we, we load the vtr.bmp image into this image object. And we call load texture to get it into OpenGL and delete the image, because we're done with it. Then we have the handle resize function, which is called whenever the window is resized and the draw scene function, which actually draws our cube. So the first thing we do is we move forward by 20 units, then we set up the ambient light, which is uh, shining everywhere on the scene, with an intensity of 0.3. Then we have our positioned light, which is at... Um, it has an intensity of 0.7, and this pre this element is always just one. And it's located uh, two box sizes to the left, one box size up, and four out of the screen. And this is one because it's a positioned light source rather than a directed light source. A directed light source is zero. Now we rotate by the opposite of the angle, and then we're drawing the six faces of the cube. So we call GL begin GL quads to start drawing quadrilaterals, and we call GL color 3F because the top face is a colored face. So we call GL normal 3F to give the normal vector, the vector perpendicular to the face, and then we specify the four coordinates of the face. And we have the bottom face, which is another colored face. And we have the left face, which is colored also, but it uses color blending. So we have two calls to color ver to GL color 3F. Uh, this one sets the color for the first two vertices, and this call sets the color for the next two vertices. Then we have the face on the right side, which also uses blending, and a call to GL end. And then we call GL enable GL texture 2D to enable textures and we call GL bind texture to tell it that we want to apply this texture, the texture with ID, with this particular ID, uh, to whatever polygons we're going to be drawing. And these function calls have to be outside of a GL begin GL end block. So that's why we had to have this call to GL end. Then we have these two calls to GL text param parameter i, which makes it so that we're using blurry texture mapping instead of blo blocky texture mapping. Then we change the color to white so that we're not using any kind of color filtering. The texture just looks normal. We call GL begin GL quads again, and we're drawing the f front and the back faces of the cube. And we need these calls to GL text chord 2F to indicate the texture coordinates of each vertex of the of the um, different faces. 
So that's what these calls are. So we have the front face, the back face, uh, GL end, and then we disable texturing so that subsequently we'll just have colored materials or colored faces rather than painting images on top of the faces. Then glut swap buffers to send the 3D image to the screen. We have the update function called every 25 milliseconds with this value parameter which we just ignore. Um, we increase the angle by 1 and once it gets above 360 we decrease 360. We decrease it by 360 to keep it close to 0 um, without actually changing what the angle is. And then here's our main function. We initialize glut. We create the window and initialize the rendering parameters. Then we point glut to the three functions that we're going to be using to display the screen and handle key presses and handle when the window is resized. And then we set up the timer with this call to glut timer func. And we call glut main loop to tell glut to take control of the program. And our last line in the main function is return zero. That code brings about this program right here. And that's a quick review of everything we've learned so far, the basics of OpenGL.